Hey everyone, Eric Gonzalez here. In today's episode, we've got excerpts from Daryl Thorpe's brand new course that was just released today. In this course, Daryl brings a band, talk time to the Village Studios during his masterclass to record three songs from scratch. Cameras were running 24-7 capturing the process, from setting up the mics, every single take, banter between takes, overdubs, ideas that were hit and miss, rough mixing, questions asked by the students of the masterclass, all the way to the very end when the band was happy. Afterwards, Daryl then takes us to his mixing room and finishes the songs up, mixing them to completion. So we got a couple excerpts from the course to show here. The first is part of the drum micing chapter, then leads to takes of the track. The second excerpt is awesome because during the guitar overdubs of one of the tracks, Daryl has this great idea and walks the guitarist through the process, the guitarist not knowing what's coming up, and then being really happy with the result. The third excerpt is when Daryl is mixing the track back in his mix room. He wasn't too happy with the vocal reverb going on. He decides to change it to something that he is happy with. Then from there, continues on the mix. I hope you enjoy the excerpts. If you want to find the full course, there's a link in the description down below. So Daryl, you got, you got a pretty eclectic combination of mics. Okay, uh, I'm gonna say it right now that some of my choices weren't available, which is a bummer, but whatever. Um, but yes. Like, what is that? Uh, I wanted a 47 tube on the mono overhead, but they weren't, it's being used by the other session that's not as good as ours, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need a 47. <laughs> so I'm doing, guys, I'm doing a little bit more than what I normally, I keep my micings really kind of stripped back simple. I really do. I'm doing a little extra things here and there just for why the hell not. And then we can, do a little A, B and things, and then maybe we use both, maybe we just pick one, who knows, blah, blah, blah. So I'll start with the kick drum. 47 Fet is my mic of choice. His kick sounds really good. I figured let's, normally I go in, but I figured, eh, let's do a double head vibe today for the moment. If it sucks, we'll switch. But then I brought my Loughton uh, FC-357, which was built and intended for a fat killer. A $1,000 mic versus a $5,000 mic. So that was his thing. And it does work pretty well. It handles the SPL very well. It doesn't have the same mid-range. So you don't get the air? No, the lower mid. Oh, lower mid, okay. Like it's a little thinner down there, but it's still, it's for a, a very good pull it off the shelf, new from Vintage King wherever and shove it in a kick drum. It's great. I've always been complaining to him. I hate spider mounts and I've told him a thousand times and he knows it, but he doesn't do anything about it. So it's fine. We'll call him. <laughs> I'll call him again. Yes, I know you hate spider mounts. Because you can't get a microphone where you want it to be with a spider mount. Yeah. So I usually have to Either has to be a double head thing or I take the front head off, which I do a lot in certain situations. I don't mind doing that. Uh, but in this case, I figured let's just go with it because it does, it sounds really good. 441, which I just call a poke mic right here, points at the edge of the kick, front edge of the kick, and then the snare drum. I'll show you a little bit more in the, in the control room what I'm going to do with that guy. Then mono overhead. Uh, like I said, I wanted a 47, but wasn't available, so we're going to do a 67. I try to keep it over the snare drum itself because the relationship between the 57 and this is my tone of the snare. It really is. Don't think of this as a cymbal mic. It's not. It's really an overhead mic. I'm going to put cymbal mics up, which, you know, C12s, 87s. But I usually prefer coals because they're warm and they'll cut down on the cymbal splash. Especially if you have a drummer that's a basher, it's kind of, which I know this band is not bashers. So same with the overhead. I usually split the kit like a cross, like this. That's my center point of my imaging. This. Obviously the mono over has a little off, but whatever. And then from there, I'll put my two cymbal mics kind of like equally spaced out here and here. So let me get those in. And then that 87 is the hat mic. 
So go ahead and place that, and then you can move that other coal over for the overhead. And then with me, neatness counts. <laughs> Always, I get, I will find every loose stand, every, uh, no offense Peter, wherever you are. You want, this, you want this one, right? I want that coal right here. So what you're gonna have to do is slide, that guy over there. slide this over yeah. here. And then another trick to do is just do this. So it, the stand takes up less space. Oh, smart. See? And then just come down on it like this. And then I don't really need a pad on this. Oh, I forgot to say, there's pads on the 47 FET and my FC357, 10 you dBs. Same height? Yeah, same height, same angle. So it's gonna go kinda like this. And then this is why. That's right now. Yep. I got yelled at by my old boss for neatness yeah, keep the neat. in a session. And ever since then, I've always tried to keep it neat. So then we're gonna go like about that way, but then I'll come back here. No, oh, not too bad. I might go up. This is awesome. I've never seen anybody mic it like this. It's feeling good at this tempo, though. Yeah. 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 You happy? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Why don't we do it again? Okay. Yeah. Oh, check your tuning real quick. That was good.
now. I mean, honestly, guys, I kind of think I got it. Yeah, that felt pretty good. That, that felt good. really good. Yeah. I really think the verses, though, on the previous take were much better than this one. Okay. Or something like the first half of the other one might have been better. I have a note. Okay. Let's take five and let me sift through this. I like one that. More. One more. Um. Yeah? Let's try it. I kind of feel like he, hold on, man. Let, yeah. let me, uh, and I, I'm not married to this. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but. I want it to get, be like more like trippy war on drugs than, than Almond Brothers. You know I mean? It's a little, well, we're, we're in Almond Brothers. Yeah. Yeah, like a Ray Crate, like a delay going yeah. on there. Like, let's oh, go that. I played it? Yeah, let's go yeah. for that tone, man. Okay. That sounds great. Okay. It's a little too bland at the yeah. moment, yeah. right? I feel you, yeah. Let's hear this. Right. Whoa. Exactly. But you're not going to play that riff. Uh, you're going to play... Uh, play the root. Up. No, 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 no. A single note. And then let's see if you just hit it. I don't know, eighth note? You're just gonna like pluck it every eighth. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so the first three. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, uh, do the do the four. Do all four, trust me. What? Oh, do all four? Yeah. Okay, where's my, oh, there it is. It's also, it's on like a, yeah, I don't know if fun, funky setting. Yeah, that's fine. Under, yeah, like. Yeah, under uh, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. I could dig it. Do one more, do the octave yeah, lower, lower of that. One, two, three, four. Let me turn it down.
Okay, every time it hits me, I am not grooving on... Might be okay for the chorus, but I'm just not grooving on the verse lead vocal verse reverb. So let's just first folk verb. Let's do something else. Maybe like a chamber, chamber vibe, like Valhalla. Yes, that's how Valhalla is pronounced, by the way. But let's just go chamber. I'm just gonna turn it down about 10 dB because it's probably gonna be plenty. Don't lead me on cause I'm head over heels. A little better. I see the way and I know it ain't logical. Logical. Okay, yeah. So there's you wrap the me up and the it's chamber. hard to conceal. Uh, I want it pretty long, four it's seconds. It sounds I great. But then I cranked up three to later about when I saw 70 the milliseconds. Impossible. Impossible. And then pre delay is, is an, it's such a great effect. I never really learned about pre delay until uh, I started working at Oceanway because that was just a big thing that standard operating procedure at, at Oceanway where if you pre delay or you put a delay into a reverb around 60 milliseconds, 80 milliseconds, sometimes 100 milliseconds, it makes the perception of the reverb to be longer and or louder than what it really is because it gives time for the ear to hear the dry source of the vocal and then following immediately after is the reverb tail effect of it. It's such a great tool to, and it was done a ton in somehow, somehow somebody ways, figured it out in the 50s, 60s, it was done a ton, they just did so much of the pre-delay and the reverb um, it's just not talked about that much. It's really interesting uh, these days. Although it's becoming more and more of a thing, I think. Uh, I hear engineers talking about more and more, which is cool. But pretty much all plugins have pre-delay built into them, so you can just crank it up as, as needed. I would highly suggest you, you take your lead vocal and put it in a track and then pick your favorite reverb setting, plugin, plate, chamber, whatever it is, and then mess with the pre-delay and you'll figure out real quickly how much it helps the ear hear the reverb without sort of smearing up the track or smearing up the vocal. Uh, it's such a great tool for that. I'm, I'm really liking the reverb. All I did was just turn it down 2 dB. Two dB. So let me. That's Mike's loopy guitar. The ground would shake and the sky would turn on and off, on and off. But when our hell came apart at the seams, the simple question was, I couldn't wait for another surprise. 
<laughs> Back down Mike's guitar. Uh, chorus guitar. Kind of okay, what well, it was. Although I do want to mess with uh, young Edson's. That. That all part such a good payoff. Good songwriters, these kids. I like it. I hope you enjoyed that. To find the full course, check out the link in the description down below. Sign up to produce like a pro if you haven't already. Like, subscribe, and until next time, adios.